Now, there's another conversation going on right at the moment regarding behavioural safety. And that is, you actually shouldn't even put a behavioural safety programme in place until the conditions are right and the foundations are set for it actually to flourish. You know, that, that has to be right, doesn't it? Well, to have a look at that, what we're going to do is have a look at what we mean by behavioural safety programmes and safety culture programmes. Because often these are used to mean exactly the same thing. And yet, if we have a look at a model of safety culture, and this is just one model, there are plenty of them, we can see here that safety culture is actually made up of four elements. It's made up of environment, language, behaviours and beliefs. So the environment is about our physical environment, such as the workplace, our surroundings, plant, tools, equipment. But it's also our non-physical environment, such as our process and procedures, and even things like IT support structures, all form part of what our culture is. But then we've got language. And it's how language is talked about from top to bottom in an organisation. And not just how it's talked about, but how it's communicated. For instance, many organisations now have um, language such as safety first, or even safety as a core value. And that's absolutely setting the culture of that particular business. But then, of course, there's behaviours. And the way that people behave in an organisation day in, day out, is the norm of that organisation and an absolutely strong foundation of what the culture is. And then finally, beliefs. And beliefs is about both individual beliefs, which are closely linked to attitudes, but also the beliefs of the organisation. And these are often demonstrated through things like safety policy statements or even KPIs. Because when an organisation sets a KPI, what it's actually saying is, we believe this is important. 